Season 5 of Inside Athletics rolls on. Welcome to another episode. I'm your host, Atto Bolden. Our guest this evening broke the world record in the 100 hurdles this season, but it wasn't all good because she failed to make the U.S. Olympic team in the 100-meter hurdles. Our guest is Kenny Harrison of the United States. Welcome, Kenny, to Inside Athletics. It's good to have you on. Tell me about your 2016 season. I don't think you had to have a crystal ball to see that you were headed to something really fast based on how you had opened up. But was there something maybe that happened in your preseason that made you go, huh, 2016 is not going to be like the other seasons I've had before? Yes and no. I think for it to be my first professional season, you know, it was I try to have like the same mindset that I had in college. You know, you're gonna go through indoor mm -hmm. and depending how, how well you do indoor, it's gonna determine how you do outdoor. And so to run 7-7 seven, seven, um, was just like amazing. And so my coach was like, you're gonna run something pretty fast outside. And you know, to open up the season with 12-3, I was like, he's right. <laughs> fast so forever, right? Yes. Yeah. So just from there, it was, you know, each race I felt really good and, you know, I wasn't trying to run fast. It just happened. And, you know, with one bad race, you know, I had an unbelievable season. I remember watching and, and calling the Prefontaine Classic. Um, when you ran the 1224 there, that had to tell you, okay, not only is this going to happen, but this world record is going to happen pretty soon. At that point, do you start to then dream about a time that you want to run or dream about maybe the meet that you wanted to break it at? What, what did, was Prefontaine special in terms of what it then started um, in your head, thinking ahead? Yeah, I think Prefontaine just really opened my eyes to, you know, you have what it takes to break the world record. And, you know, for that race to feel as um, easy and as smooth uh, as it did, you know, it just really was like, okay, I can do this and I will do this. Um, you know, I was hoping to maybe do it at the Olympics, um, but, you know, my coach tells me, you know, each time I'm, I'm, I'm at practice, we go for 12 flat, you know. So, you know, just having that in my mindset, that's what helps me um, to run so fast just because, you know, we like to set the standards high. So you get to the Olympic trials and you're obviously a huge favorite because you have been running so well. But the United States is uh, <laughs> by far the deepest country in the world in that event. Tell me what, from your perspective, was what took place at the Olympic trials. Because to the outside person, they said, well, she's the fastest in the world. How could she not get in the top three? What happened in Eugene for you? I think the Olympic trials was, you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself. You know, to go from being an all right hurdler to being the number one hurdler, you know, it was a lot for myself and to have to deal with the press and, you know, just having all that right before going on the line, it was a lot for myself. And, you know, I just try to tell myself, you know, just make the team instead of going out there and, you know, having the mindset of I'm, I'm about to win. And I think that's where I went wrong. And, you know, even in the race, I can remember being able, I was thinking, and I'm like, I, you know, when you're running fast, yes. you don't have time to think. And I can remember getting out and realizing I'm not in first and just kind of, okay, well, you're kind of in second, you're still there, and then third, and then fourth, and then after that, it was just like, just get me through this race. Like, you did not make the Olympic team. Wow. Um, but, you know, that race happens so fast, and you got to be on the line. And, you know, those girls, they definitely... They wanted to make that team, and I did not have that mindset the way that I usually did, and that's why I went wrong. So 2015 and 2016, you made the team in 2015, but fall started the World Championships. 2016 didn't make the team. Was there a part of you that started to question your ability in big races, or did you have your coach sort of reassuring you, look, Kenny, this is what happens to young athletes. Which one of, it, which one of those was it? Well, I think in 2015, it was just a new environment, you know, making my first world championship team and, you know, stuff happens to the young athletes. But, you know, the Olympic trials, that was just an experience I've never even 
had before. And, you know, I didn't uh, try out in 2012, and I didn't even make the finals. Right, you didn't get out the first round in the... In right, the, in so the, I just think it's a, it's a process, you know. Everyone can't be perfect all the time, and, you know, it just happened that my bad day was the Olympic trials, and I do think I can compete at big meets, and, you know, I, I'm going to prove that 2017, so... <laughs> now, after the Olympic trials, I had people coming up to me saying, it's ridiculous that Kenny Harrison has to stay home from Rio because she's clearly the best hurdler in the world. There should be some sort of rule where world record holders get to go to the Olympic Games. Is that something that you even like? Or, I mean, I know as an American, you know, look, you got to get top three to make the Olympic team. But was that something that you even like dreamed about at all when you, you know, when, when the reality hit you that look, I am the world record holder, and I'm not going to be in the Olympic Games. I think it's fair. You know, you have to be able to perform when it counts, and I did not. And breaking the world record, that was just one thing that I had to do by the time my season ended. Right. And it just happened to be, um, you know, in London. And, you know, so many people wanted me to go to Rio, but honestly, I was just happy to get back up after such a defeat and... You know, I knew the Americans, they were going to be fine. I knew they were going in the strongest. So, you know, I wasn't worried um, about them. And, you know, I just feel like my time will come. So you did recover spectacularly from those um, Olympic trials because you went to the London Anniversary Games and got the record that so many um, had predicted for you. Tell me what you remember about the race itself and then about being told that you had broken the world record because you seem to be the last person in the building that actually realized that you had broken the world record. Yes, in the race, I just remember getting out really fast. Yeah. You know, I usually have a good start, but sometimes I don't. And I can remember just getting out and, and realizing I'm in a good, good position. And, you know, just I just kept telling myself, keep going, you know, keep hurdling. I can realize I'm in first, but keep going because you never know where anyone else is at. And uh, my coach told me to dive at the line. And I never dived. So uh, I just dived as hard as I could. And, you know, when I seen 12-5, I was like, you know, can you just be blessed <laughs> that, you know, you won, you know, you, you got back up and, um, you know, you beat the girls that are going to Rio. So just right. be happy. Don't even worry about the time. You, you got back out there. And... So, you know, I'm just trying to walk off the track, and <laughs> Nia comes up and is like, like, turn around. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Uh, so just to see WR right next to my name, it was, it was an unbelievable moment and, you know, something that I'm going to have um, with me. Now, you have ability at not just 100-meter hurdles, but also the 400-meter hurdles. And it's been reported that in 2017, we'll actually see you step back up to the distances that you were running in high school and, uh, well, in college. Um, what prompted that move? Um, you know, you have the 100-meter hurdles world record, but why in 2017, why go back up to the, the longer distance? Well, I'm not, I probably won't be doing them uh, 2017. I'll probably be doing them the year after. Okay. There's no world championship. You know, I definitely want to go get my first medal, and that's going to be my number one focus for next year. But, you know, I definitely wanted to try to do the 400 hurdles. I think that, um, you know, there's still some left over. You know, mm -hmm. I'm always training for the 100 or both hurdles at the same time, and you see what happened when I focus just on the 100. I improve so much, have a world right. record. So, right. you know, the, you know, the, the long-term goal is I want to have all world records and all the hurdles, you know, uh, set history. Is that an event that you look at and you go, okay, I have the world record in the 100 hurdles. I think that if I give that some serious, the 400 hurdles, some serious um, effort, that I can also have the world record in that as well? Yes, I believe that. Um, you know, I'm always, having endurance is something that I always had um, when I started running track. That's why I did the 300 meter hurdles right. before I did the 100. Uh, I didn't have the technique. So I think, you know, down the line, I think I definitely have a chance of going after that. And, um, you know, like right now, I'm, I'll go after the 60 and um, see where that takes me. Now, you're a young professional. Um, you made the world championship team uh, last year, broke the world record this year. I wonder if you could share with me what you found about pro track and field 
that maybe you had totally wrong before you became a professional? Something that you thought when you, before you were a pro, oh, it's gonna, this is going to be a certain way, and now that you're here, you go, oh, it's completely not like that. Think of what that is. Mm, probably just the atmosphere that we're in. You know, I didn't, I ran a lot of Diamond League meets, so yeah. each time I go to the stadium, it's, it's full. And that's something that I didn't think that was going to be. Really? Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, a national NCAA yes. uh, every time I'm on the line. And, um, you know, I didn't think track and field was as big as it was in Europe. And, you know, just to experience all that. And um, it really is exciting <laughs> to run it. <laughs> well, you had a phenomenal 2016. Congratulations on your world record. And we, uh, we hope to see you on the circuit in 2017. And as you said, in 2018, maybe running both events. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.